Hello and welcome to another Salty Sunday. It's rare to have good conservation news for sharks and rays, but this week we have just that. At the 20th CITES meeting in Uzbekistan, more than 70 shark and ray species were granted new or strengthened international protections. Countries voted by consensus to ban the international commercial trade of whale sharks, all manta rays and all devil rays by moving them to what is called Appendix 1. These are some of the most threatened marine animals on Earth and this decision really does mark a turning point. It is a sad fact that rays and sharks have become so threatened that they now need the highest level of global protection. They have been on this planet for more than 400 million years and survived five mass extinctions, but in the last half century their decline has been unlike anything in their evolutionary history. A global analysis published in late 2024 showed that populations of sharks, rays and chimeras have fallen by more than 50% since 1970. The main driver for this being overfishing. That includes both targeted fishing for fins, meat and liver oil, but also accidental catch. And for species that grow slowly, mature late and produce few young, even small increases in mortality can cause huge declines. More than one third of all shark and ray species are now officially classified as threatened with extinction. Some of the largest and slowest to reproduce, such as deep sea sharks, pelagic rays and many mobilids are the most vulnerable. They simply cannot recover fast enough from sustained fishing pressure. Sharks are killed at staggering rates. Conservation groups estimate that over 100 million sharks die each year. Some for fins, some for meat, some as bycatch and some for their liver oil. Particularly gulper sharks whose squalene is still used in cosmetics despite widely available plant-based alternatives. A new Manta Trust study revealed that around 265,000 Manta and Devil Rays are killed every year, despite nearly a decade of protection. Small-scale coastal fisheries, usually boats under 15 metres, are responsible for 87% of global mobilid deaths. Most are caught in drift gill nets and they're kept primarily for the lucrative gill plate trade, with some also sold for meat. The gill plates are cut out, dried and sold, mostly for traditional medicine in parts of Asia. People boil them into tonics or soups, claiming they can cure everything from coughs and fevers to inflammation or even cancer. There's no scientific proof any of this works, but the belief drives a thriving market. In places like mainland China and Hong Kong, dried mobilid gill plates can sell for $249 to over $1,200 per kilogram, with the average hovering around $512 per kilogram. That kind of money creates a powerful incentive for fishers. A few plates can be worth more than the rest of the ray. Five countries, that is India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Peru account for 85% of all manta and devil ray catch. The Indian Ocean alone counts for 74% of global mobilid mortality. In some places, local populations of manta and devil rays have dropped by up to 99%. All of this is happening on top of climate change, habitat loss, warming oceans and pollution. Deep sea mining which may begin in international waters in the next few years, could threaten at least 30 species of sharks, rays and chimeras by disrupting seafloor habitats and creating sediment plumes that interfere with feeding and breeding. If you'd like to know more about this, then please see my video on deep sea mining. I'll put a link in the sources. This isn't just the decline of a few species. Scientists warn that we're watching entire marine ecosystems destabilise because sharks and rays are crucial ecological balances. When we lose them, ocean systems unravel. So what exactly do these new CITES protections do? 
while whale sharks, oceanic white tip sharks, the three species of manta ray, and all nine species of devil ray have now been moved to Appendix 1. This is the highest level of protection CITES can give. It means no commercial international trade is allowed. No fins, no gill plates, no meat, nothing. Several other shark species were moved or newly listed on Appendix 2, including taupe sharks, smoothhound sharks and gulper sharks. Appendix 2 doesn't ban trade outright, but it requires that any trade be legal, traceable and scientifically proven to be sustainable. Some species, especially the most threatened guitar fishes and wedge fishes, were given zero export quotas. This effectively bans all international trade, even though they remain on Appendix 2, because no legal exports can be issued. The significance is not just the listings themselves, but the politics. The proposal passed by consensus. That is incredibly rare. It signals a global shift in how governments view sharks, not just as fishing commodities, but as wildlife in desperate need of protection. The new rules will take effect 90 days after the meeting closes on the 5th of December. We need sharks and rays in our oceans. They are not just big fish. They're architects of the ocean. They regulate prey populations, move nutrients through ecosystems, shape habitats, and maintain balance in marine food webs. When shark and ray numbers drop, the effects ripple outward. Prey species explode in number or shift behavior. Herbivores overgraze seagrass beds. Some food webs collapse entirely. We've already seen it happen in multiple ecosystems. Protecting sharks and rays also protects the fisheries and coastal communities that depend on healthy oceans. One example of this was the decline of large coastal sharks such as black tip, dusky and sandbar off the US east coast, which caused a boom in their main prey, cow nose rays. The rising ray population overconsumed bay scallops, which led to the collapse of North Carolina's century-old commercial scallop fishery. Many nations rely on sharks and rays for ecotourism. Manta ray tourism alone is worth hundreds of millions of dollars annually, far more than their value in the gill plate trade. But beyond economics, there's something deeper. Sharks and rays have survived for hundreds of millions of years. They predate trees, dinosaurs, even mountains that exist today. The idea that they could disappear on our watch within a few human lifetimes is extraordinary and tragic. Saving them isn't only about conservation, it's about ensuring that the ocean we pass on to future generations still has the wildlife, the complexity, and the wonder that we were lucky enough to inherit. Thanks for watching this Salty Sunday. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends.